I think it's fair to say that shame is, um, and has been, for most of my life, has been an addiction for me. Uh, I'm not really sure why. I think that some people are just, you know, that's their, that's their constitutional makeup. And, you know, it's, I mean, it's like old friends, too. You know, you, sometimes those mistakes are the, the only thing that's connecting you to your past. And, and if I let go of those things, then, then who am I? right now yeah we just we played a festival yesterday it was a lot of fun it's a lot of really good bands got up early this morning and, uh, and we're going to Amsterdam today so we're all pretty excited the one striking difference and somebody told me this before the first show that I ever played in Europe they said it was, it was a journalist and they asked me they said are you scared are you worried that for a lot of the people that you're playing for they're not really listening to your words <laughs> And that scared me shitless, because um, that's all I have. <laughs> you know, I was like, "Well, I'm a lyricist. I'm not. I mean, I think the music's interesting, but it's not my. You know, uh, I'm not the Beach Boys." The thing that I've learned over the last year, getting to play shows in Europe several times. Um, is that the, the lyrics, while they're important, and they are important, yeah, even in a different language, um, it's, it's the emotions that you're communicating through the music. That's the part that people understand. Even, in, even back home in the States, if somebody's connecting with it, I don't think it's necessarily just the words, they're part of it, but it's the emotion that you're communicating. just as welcome and just at home now here in Europe as I do back in the States, if I'm honest. Uh, and I've been, I've been accepted here just as much as back home. In a way it's strange, but in a way it's really comforting because no matter where I am, I, I feel like it's okay. I can feel a sense of, of peace and balance. You know? I, had, I had a very hard decision a few years ago when, when I, was, I was finally working as a therapist, I'd finished all my degrees and, and I did spend a lot of time and money <laughs> doing it. And, but I, I sort of hit a, a fork in the road where a lot of things with music were starting to happen just out of the blue, really. Um, and the therapy was, I was just really starting to get going with that too. And um, I thought long and hard and I realized that the therapy profession would always be there, music might not. So the most responsible thing for me to do would be to see what would happen with music, you know, see if it was the right thing for me to do. And I think it has been, I'm glad that I did it. But, um, you know, I, I only want to, to do this as long as I feel like I should. If I don't have anything else to say, I don't wanna, I don't wanna write anymore. You know, I'll go back and, uh, and I'll be a therapist because I loved that too. You know, that was a that was a dream of mine as well. So um, I'm I'm happy with both, but uh, I miss the one that I'm not doing whenever I'm not doing it. I've for so long just to see you messing around. What you've done, what you've done.
you know, the funny thing is, I've never, uh, I've spent, I've spent most of my life not really in a, in a healthy place. One of the most common questions I'm asked is, what was it like growing up with blind parents? But really, the biggest, you know, the biggest thing that happened in my whole life, the thing that I look at as being like the most definitional occurrence was my parents got divorced and my family completely fell apart. The blind thing doesn't mean anything compared to that. I mean, it's small potatoes. Like, my parents can't see, but we were fine. You know, that wasn't like, uh, I mean, I'm not saying that didn't have obstacles. It, it did, of course it did, but, but what happened with my family was, everybody went their own ways, you know, when they split up. Uh, you know, I lost relationship with my brother, really. And, um, my dad and I didn't talk for years. And, uh, you know, that's the, that's the heavy stuff. That's the stuff that, that made me who I am and I didn't learn from. And uh, if I had learned from it, you know, I would have made different choices, I think. And that's my fault. That's not my parents' fault. I don't blame anybody. I'm a, I might have been a psychologist, but I don't blame my parents for everything. Uh, um, but it, I didn't learn from it. And that's why I don't think I was able to move on and that I made the same mistakes that my folks did. I guess I learned whenever, uh, whenever everything came out, whenever, uh, whenever she found out about the affair, and uh, and that was uh, that was the worst day of my life. <laughs> That's when I realized that I was, you know, I was living the the same life that you know, maybe that my dad lived and, and uh, I didn't understand what, you know, what commitment was and uh, that's when I learned. That's when I saw it, I, you know, I stared, I stared my demons face to face and I realized that I was, I was with them and, uh, and I wasn't fighting them at all. You know, th there's, there's, a, there's a blessing in that though, there really was because I, I truly believe that if I hadn't made the mistakes that I did, that I would have at some point made, made the same mistakes, you know. It was my fault. It was all my fault. But if I hadn't made the mistakes, I don't think I ever would have, would have understood uh, the importance of relationships and, and taking those things seriously, you know. So I got so hung up in the, into the shame and the guilt of it all, and I actually kind of got addicted to that, I think. But, you know, I made the choice that it would be better to purge the ideas, to get, get the thoughts out, get the emotions out, in, in order for me to be able to heal and move on from it. We're in Münster, Deutschland, Münster, Germany, and uh, we showed up, um, we knew we were playing in a church, and we showed up, and uh, it's one of the most beautiful buildings I've ever seen in my entire life, incredible, and uh, I think this is the first show they've ever had, first like, uh, rock show, not a good moniker for us, but uh, it's beautiful, it's just a beautiful, beautiful building, kind of humbling to play in a place like this. I feel like the, 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 the one major similarity with people that are coming to my show is that they have a great longing 
that they've accepted um, to understand the, the sadness that's in their life. And they want to understand it and they want to move on, you know, from it. That's the best thing I can understand. That's what people tell me and that's what people write to me. And... I hate to be corny about it, but I think it's a very unifying element. And, um, you know, we, in therapy we call it universality. It's, it's the idea that, that I am not alone. Um, when I understand that, that the person next to me has gone through a very similar experience. I guess part of the reason why I sing about the things I do is, is because I want to remind people that it's curative to acknowledge brokenness. It's curative to accept that we're not maybe to the point that we, that we could be or that we should be or that we want to be. The courageous thing is not to beat yourself up. The courageous thing is to actually to forgive yourself and to ask forgiveness from other people. That's, that's brave. And I didn't, I was a coward. And I didn't have the, I didn't have the tenacity or the, the vigor uh, or the courage to, to say I was wrong. to be in a healthier place. I've never been where I'm at before because I, uh, everything that I've written up to this point has been extremely pointed and purposeful and situational. You know, I'm happily without a tragedy to, <laughs> uh, to have to detail or to process, but, but as a writer, that's also a uh, that can also actually be problematic. You know, honestly, my personal theory on why that, that we have trouble in this generation is um, it's, it's divorce. It's, um, it's the fact that we've started to take love less seriously than our parents did and our grandparents did and our great-grandparents did. And that we've moved into a place where we're okay with, with throwing away relationships if they're not exactly what we want. And I'm guilty of that. There's never a shortage of things to, to talk about that need to be discussed. Um, the, this, this, you know, the scary part is actually being able to write a song that has a smile on the end of it. Yeah, so it's, you know, it's a mix. It's not, it's, it's exciting, but, uh, but it, just in general with my life, it's just, it's just scary. It's, it's just more unknown, it feels more out of control.